What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now I'm going to start a new series of videos and this is episode one. These are going to be two tips. So I'm going to try and keep it as short and as sweet and as to the point as I possibly can and answer some of your questions. So what we're going to do in this series is look at some power tools and we're also going to look at some hand tools. So quick tips on how to set them up if it's your first time using them. Now I'm going to answer a question today that came in on my previous video which was the three-legged stool build and it came from Clayton Griffiths and Clayton asks, Hi John, uh, love watching your videos. Just can you please do a video on how to measure and cut on a miter saw? Just bought one and want to make one of your planters. Thanks. Well, no problem Clayton, my friend. This is what this video is going to be about. A few tips on using a miter saw for the first time. So a few little hints and tips. So without further ado, let's just get in and have a look. Okay, so very quickly, let's do some terminology and have a quick look at the miter saw. Now, my particular miter saw, to give it its full name, this is a dual bevel sliding miter saw. So what does all that mean? Well, the dual bevel means that it can bevel left and right. So tilting the miter saw like this is how you do your bevel cuts. Sliding means it's on two bars, so it can slide in and out, which just means I can cut a longer or wider material. If your one is fixed in place, it'll often be referred to as a chop saw, so it's just a straight up and down cut. And miter, meaning that we can do miter or angle cuts by moving the table or the bed of the miter saw this way. So that covers it all, a dual bevel sliding miter saw. Okay, so you've just bought your first miter saw and here is tip number one and that is PPE. This is health and safety. Now I would know I would get hammered in the comments if I did not do this as the number one point. So eye protection, we want that. I'm, I'm sometimes guilty of not wearing this myself and you guys give me a hard time in the comments and rightly so. Ear protection, you do not want to end up with tinnitus or damage your hearing. These things are pretty loud and you have a blade spinning at a couple of thousand RPM that can remove body parts. So definitely eye protection. And if you're not set up with good dust extraction, this is one of the worst offenders in the workshop for causing dust. Uh, they're notoriously bad all makes for gathering up the dust that they produce. So you have to kind of go to extreme lengths to try and catch it. And if you don't have good ex dust extraction, I recommend you do all your chopping outside. If you, that's not possible, then definitely think about a respirator. So think health and safety first, think PPE, and that's tip number one. Okay, tip number two, making your first cut. Now, let's say we're dealing with a piece of four by two or two by four, even a piece of plywood. Never assume that any piece of stock is square or true. More often than not, it is not. And you will have a ratty end on it that's damaged and frayed. And you wanna cut that, true it up, so you have a good reference edge to take your first measurements from. Now, it might just be a couple of mil or it could be a couple of inches. Let's true up this piece. Okay, so a truing cut. Now, you can see the end of this piece of four by two. It has a knot missing out of the end of it here. It also has two knots here, which I may or may not want in the piece. Now, if I wanted to use this for a leg, say for a workbench or something, I might get rid of those uh, knots because they are um, gonna cause a little bit of weakness. Again, the end is pretty ratty. I've no idea whether that's square or not. So I can either take a couple of mil right off the end there, or I can chop from here and start. And I think that's what I do. That you get rid of the ratty end and these two knots. Okay, so now we have a good clean end to start with and that is perfectly square. So I have a good reference edge to start taking my first measurements from. Okay, so we've trued up the end of our bore. Now we have a good reference point to start. We can begin to answer the question that I was asked by Clayton about measuring and cutting on a miter saw. So now what we need to take a look at is blade curve. So let's briefly have a look at what we mean by the curve of the blade and how that's gonna affect where we measure. Let's have a look. Okay, so very quickly, let's have a quick look at the blade. Now here's the blade of my miter saw. And you can see the blade has a thickness to it. This is just under three millimeters or just under about an eighth of an inch. And that's what we're gonna lose off our material every time we make a cut. So we don't wanna lose, we don't wanna measure, cut our piece and then be out by just about three millimeters. We're gonna end up with gaps everywhere. So we have to allow for the curve of our blade. And this is true of every single woodworking machine that we use that has a blade, be it a bandsaw, a circular saw, a track saw, or miter saw. Everything will have a certain curve or width to the blade that we have to allow for. So how does that affect our measurement? Well, let's have a look. Okay, so measuring from our trued end, let's cut a piece. Now let's say I wanted exactly 300 millimeters or just about 12 inches. I mark that there, square my line across. We'll take this to the miter saw and just look quickly at the setup. 
Okay, so here we are at the miter saw. This is our 300 millimeter mark. Now, bear in mind, we measured from this end and that's important. So it's 300 millimeters from here to our mark. Now, why have we got to allow for the curve for a blade? Well, if I was just to drop my miter saw directly now, straight on top of that line like that, like you might in be inclined to do, you're gonna lose half the width of your blade to this side. And that's gonna give you a small gap of a couple of mil. Now, maybe that's not important, but often it is important when you're trying to be accurate. Likewise, if I put my mark to the left-hand side of the blade, having measured from the right-hand side of my material, now I'm gonna lose the complete three millimeters of that blade off the end of my piece, and it's going to be out. So, bearing in mind that I measured from the right-hand side, I wanna keep my mark to the right-hand side of my blade and that you can even come a little bit off the mark if you want, and then you can sneak up on it. So remember, if you measure from the right-hand side of the piece, keep that line to the right-hand side of the blade. Likewise, if you measure from the left-hand side of the piece, keep that line to the left-hand side of your blade, and that will allow for your curf and give you exactly 300 millimeters right there. Okay, so that's quickly allowing for the blade curve. Now it is important, and I often make that mistake myself, when you're trying to cut through pieces quickly, whether you measure from this end sometimes and make your mark, or sometimes you run your tape from the opposite end and make your mark, you can forget then when you're going to the miter saw if you're in a hurry and you can end up chopping the wrong side of that line. So it happens the whole time, it happens to everybody, even though it is a basic um, enough thing to understand, you can still do it in a hurry, just like measuring from this side. So if I measure from the left, cut on the left, if I measure from the right, make sure I'm on the right hand side of that blade, and believe me, it will happen to you, even though you know this, sometimes you do forget, and you end up with a three millimeter gap, and you're there scratching your head as to why, what happened. Well, that's it, we didn't allow for the curve for the blade. So, on to the next tip. Okay, tip number four, and that is use stop blocks. So stop blocks are your best friend when you're doing loads of repeat cuts. Every time you measure and cut, you can uh, introduce inaccuracy. So if you measure one piece, cut it, make sure it's fitting perfectly, use that piece to set up your stop block, and uh, reference from that, you can get loads of repeat cuts and all your pieces will be exactly the same length. So let's do that now. So we'll cut this piece at 300 millimeters. We'll set up a stop block and we'll cut a few more. And this will really help Clayton out if he's thinking about making my planters because there's loads of repeat cuts to do in that. Let's do it. So I'll make sure I'm on the right side of the, the curve. Let's cut away. Okay, so I have our 300 millimeter piece here, and now I've checked it that it's 100% accurate and it's fitting exactly where I want it to fit, and we need a load of these. So, nice thing to do is set up a stop block, like I said, so we don't have to keep measuring. So, we can just take a simple piece like this, I can drop down my blade, I can butt this up against it. Now, I only want to just butt it up against it, don't push against the blade and force the blade. Um, I'll show you a little tip in a minute where we will actually want to do that. But uh, yeah, just rest it against it. So we don't want to deflect that blade in any way whatsoever. Leave that there, let the blade come up, hold that in place, and butt our stop block up against it. Now it's only a case of put a clamp on this guy and we can run loads of cuts through and they will all be exactly the same length just like that, and now we can cut a bunch of these and they'll all be the exact same length. Let's do that. Okay, so there you go. Very quickly you can see just how accurately you can cut um, pieces by setting up a stop block on your miter saw. And miter saws excel at cross cuts. That's going across the grain and chopping pieces. That's where these things make their bread and butter. And you can see they are absolutely perfect. So every single one of them are the exact same measurement to the tenth of a millimeter. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what you want when you're trying to be accurate and you have a load of pieces. So the stop block is your best friend in that situation. Now let me give you a quick look at the corner of this stop block. There's a little trick to be seen here. Okay, so very quickly you can see I've just put a little angle cut in this stop block. Now the reason for that is it doesn't really affect me on my miter saw, but some miter saws have really big flat beds. Uh, you can see this one has lots of grooves to deal with that problem of sawdust. But you can, if you're doing loads of cuts, let's say you're in closer to the bed and you have saw sawdust piling up here. Well, that can keep your piece a couple of millimeters off. So you just brush it out of there 
you will always be able to hit up against that piece. You can see you can get a lot of sawdust in underneath there and it still won't hold you off your stop lock. So if you're using stop locks on your bed, you're pretty close to your miter saw, always just put a little bevel coat in them just to help deal with sawdust and it's easy to clean it out and easy to stay accurate. Okay, that's just a little bit on stop blocks. There's a lot more you could say about them. I wanna keep this video nice and short and sweet. So you can set a stop block up anywhere along this miter saw station. And I have a full build on this miter saw station. So if you get yourself a miter saw and you wanna build yourself a miter saw station, this one is really strong, robust, and it's simple to make. That's the most important thing about it. It's nice and easy to make. And like I said, I can set a stop block up anywhere along this, either to the left or the right of my miter saw. So if I'm doing lots of repeat cuts on large pieces, or if I'm doing some really small pieces, if I'm making some hard wood boxes, or do want to do some nice joinery, then you can set up a stop block and be nice and accurate with your little small pieces as well. So that's stop blocks. On to the next part. Okay, on to tip number five, and that's sneaking up on your cut. So let's say you wanna cut something, you can't really measure it 100%, you might be a few mil out, so you wanna cut it oversized and sneak up on that cut. Let me show you how to do that on a motor saw now. Okay, let's look at sneaking up on a cut. So let's say we measure this particular piece, we need this to be bang on, we need it to be accurate. This has to go in and fit absolutely perfectly. We don't want to see any gaps. It's a nice piece of joinery or something and it's very important. And we want this to be right. So we're going to be a little bit conservative in our measurement. We left it a mill or two longer than what it needs to be and we'll just test fitting it. Now we want to take a small little piece at this, off the end of this, as small as we can, and we want to sneak up on our cut to get that beautifully accurate fit. Well, not a problem. Drop your saw blade down. Now, you want to put some pressure on your saw blade. So remember when I said, when we're setting up our stop block, do not put pressure on your saw blade. So you can see, if I butt that up against the side of my blade, I can drop my blade up and down there all day long. But if I just put a slight bit of pressure against my blade and now lift it, you can see, I'm now down on that piece, and I'm down on that piece about half the curve, or just under half the curve of my blade, so I'm only taking a couple of mil off. So it's a good way, rather than fidgeting back and forward with the piece like this, trying to get it just right, get the teeth to sit on it, you can put it up against the side of your blade, force it, deflect that blade slightly, take it up, and drop it down, and now you're taking a very fine cut off that blade indeed. Okay, let's look at sneaking up on the cut in practice. Now, just put a pencil mark on the end of this board so we can see how this works. So let's just say that was my mark and I'm trying to sneak up on my mark to get this an absolute perfect fit. So drop my blade down, deflect my blade slightly, lift it up, and now I'm gonna drop on that. And I just want to remove that pencil mark and nothing more. Let's do that. Okay, so you can see there just how fine a cut you can get on a miter saw, just how accurate you can be. And even though this is a 12 inch or 305 millimeter blade, it's a pretty big miter saw. You can really take a mil or two at a time, even half a mil off the end of a piece and really get that fine cut. So we literally just removed a pencil line from this end of material by sneaking up on the cut. Okay, for our final tip, and possibly one of the most important thing, that's cutting angles on a miter saw. So miters and bevels. Now I'm briefly going to cover this. We could go really in depth into this, but I just want to give you a little principle to go by. This is something that has caught me out in the past. And if any of you guys who are regular viewers of my channel watched my uh, oak resin coffee table build, it happened to me in this video when I was cutting uh, angled legs for the uh, table. It was quite hilarious. But I'm gonna explain this principle to you guys so this doesn't catch you out. It's not something that, it is obvious and then it's completely not obvious as well. So let's jump in and have a look. My goodness, it is hot today and I'm a ginger haired Irish man. I'm not used to the heat. Now before we get into bevel cuts and all that on the miter saw, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video. And today's sponsor is Tradeify. Now Tradeify is a online job management platform. It's aimed at tradespeople out there. So if you're self-employed and in the trades, plumbers, carpenters, electricians, painter decorators, roofers, toilers, block layers, all you trades, men and women out there, whether it's just you and your van or you have a small crew, then this is for you. And 
that's mobile based as, as well as desktop based. It's iOS and Android and it's essentially your office in your pocket. There's so much to cover on this, I couldn't possibly cover it in one video. But basically just to say that I use it, I'm 15 years working as a self-employed electrician and I know what it's like being on the tools all day and trying to do the office work. It's a complete nightmare and Tradeify really will help you out with that. So I really recommend it. From invoicing to quotations, from timesheets to scheduling jobs, from keeping a full client database. You have it here with you all the time. It's so easy to fire off an invoice, to fire off a quotation, to track your payments so it keeps you on top of your cash flow, which is the lifeblood of your business. I highly recommend you check it out. Now, there's a 14 day free trial, no strings attached. You don't have to enter your credit card details or your debit card details, just go over to Tradeify. I leave the link below. Sign up and play with the full software for two weeks. I guarantee you, you will like it. There's loads of things you can do on it. And there's also a promo code they have given me, which is Man and Shed, that'll give you 50% off for your first three months. So definitely check it out guys. It's nice and cheap anyway and it's all your admin in one place. Believe you me, I use it. I found it unbelievably beneficial. So that's why I have no problem recommending it to you guys. So if you're in the trades, check out Tradeify. Do yourself a favor. Now, back to the miter saw. Okay, probably one of the most important parts of this video and that's cutting angles on our miter saw. After all, that's what this thing absolutely excels at. Now, there's one thing to point out here and this might not be obvious or it might be obvious to some people. It certainly wasn't obvious to me when I made this mistake. But the measurements are the angled measurements on your miter saw. What do they mean and how do you use them? Well, when the saw is set up like it is now, when I have it at zero degrees here for my miter, which is this line here, or I have it at zero degrees for my bevel, which is the angle of the blade this way, this is zero degrees. This straight line out here is zero degrees, which means the fence is 90 degrees off this. Likewise, my bed is 90 degrees off my blade. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. I'll show you this in action in a minute. So if I move my miter saw, let's say to 30 degrees, and I put my piece up against my fence, I am not going to be left with 30 degrees here. I've moved 30 degrees from zero. I haven't moved 30 degrees off my fence. So I have 30 degrees on this side, which means I've got 60 degrees on this side, which means that will leave me with 60 degrees. If that doesn't make sense, it will now. Let's have a close up. Okay, here's a quick close up on the miter saw. Now I'll do my best to explain this concept and I'll cut a piece to show you, but it's a little tricky to kind of explain. Now, this, like I said, is zero degrees. So I'm set at zero degrees here, which means I'm 90 degrees off my fence. So this angle here is 90 degrees. So what I'm doing is moving off zero towards 90. Now why is that important? Well, let's say I put this piece off four by two or two by four here, and I want an angle of 30 degrees. Now, you might come along with your miter saw, roll that around to 30 and think, happy days, cut away, I'm at 30 degrees. It says 30 degrees there. Sure, why wouldn't this piece be 30 degrees. Well, that's what I thought, and that's not the case. So what you've done here essentially is moved 30 degrees off center. You've moved 30 degrees towards the 90 degree fence, which means in here, this angle here is 60 degrees. So 30 from 90 leaves you with 60. So if you want a 60 degree angle, you set this to 30. If you want a 30 degree angle, you set it to 60, if it will go around to 60, which uh, my one won't. It will on this side, but not on this side. So you get the point. Now, let me just illustrate that for you. Let's set this to 30 degrees and take a cut and see what we're left with. Okay, so like I said, we have our piece against the fence. I've set my miter saw to 30 degrees. Now let's look and see what happens. Okay, so here's the piece I've just cut and I have a level box from UJK sitting on top of it. Now, I highly recommend you guys get yourselves one of these for setting up all your machines. I'll do a setup video on a miter saw in a later video, but this is just a quick couple of quick tips. But these are great for setting up any of your machines. So I just want to use this as a visual reference for what's going on. So here's zero degrees. Now, if I drop down onto this angle that we've just cut after setting the miter saw to 30 degrees, 
you can see I'm 59.9, which is nearly bang on 60 degrees. So I know my motor saw is pretty good. Now, I've set my motor saw to 30 and I've ended up with 60. And uh, hilariously, like I said, this happened to me in the middle of one of my videos when I was making legs for my oak resin table. I went to assemble it and of course all my angles were wrong and I was left scratching my head. So quickly figured out what the issue was and that's the issue. You're moving off the zero towards the 90 degrees and uh, not the other way around. So hopefully that helps you guys out and you guys won't make that mistake. Okay, so hopefully that tip really helps you guys out. I know uh, it's something I discovered and it might save your blushes if you're in the middle of a project and you happen to cut the wrong angle. Believe me, I have done it. We've all done it, we've all been there. Now I should point out that it's true for your bevel cuts as for your miter cuts. So that saw blade is zero degrees and the table or the bed is at 90 degrees in relation to that. So if I bevel over to 30 degrees right there, the angle between the blade and the bed is 60 and I've moved over 30 degrees. So 30 degrees, the markings on your miter saw are how far you moved your miter saw, not the actual angle you're cutting. Now, some of you may, might ask the obvious question, uh, well, John, why don't I just let the fence be zero degrees and call this out here 90 degrees? Well, some miter saws are marked for both. So they'll have both markings on it. They will have markings for the fence being at zero and for this position being at zero. But the guys in the comments are often a lot smarter than I am. So they will say why we don't mark it the other way around. So get in the comments section below and let everybody know. My goodness. I'm sweating profusely here. It's over 30 degrees in this shed. There's a fan right there. I can't turn it on because it's too noisy for the video. It would drive everybody crazy. So I'm suffering for you guys. So there we go, guys. That's just been a quick tip video. If you're new to the miter saw, and thanks to Clayton again for his question. And hopefully that gets you going, my friend. And uh, best of luck with your new miter saw and making those planters. I hope they turn out well and serve you well as well. They look fantastic once you get the flowers in them. Now there's loads more I could have covered on the miter saw. Again, I don't want to do a too in-depth video. It's just a few basic pointers. Everything from zero clearance inserts to extending the fence, the compound cuts. There's loads. You could do 10 videos on a miter saw, but I just wanted to keep it brief and give you guys a couple of pointers. So if there's any more questions any of you have about any of the hand tools I have here or any of the power tools that are in my shop, if you want a few tips, how to set them up, a few tips on how to use them, a few starters. If you're getting into woodworking, get in the comment section below and ask the question. I'll endeavor to get a video out for as many of you guys as I can. And always ask the question in the comment section below. There's a wealth of knowledge in the people who w watch these videos as well. There's a great community around this channel and some of the people in the comment section know a hell of a lot more than I know. And they, there's always great tips in the comment section. So definitely check through the comments. You will see, always see some great advice. So anything you guys think I should, I've left out or that's more important, be sure and let them in the comment section as well. And let me just say that number one tip is the most important. So if it's your first miter saw, read the manual, be safe, keep your fingers well away from the blade, wear the PPE. I know everybody hates wearing these bloody things, especially on hot days like today. Respirators are an absolute nightmare. But if you don't have good dust extraction like I've set up there, uh, wear the respirator. If you can't cut outside, wear the respirator. But at all costs, guys, keep the dust out of your lungs. That will keep you woodworking until you're 90 plus, and that's what we all want to do. So yeah, definitely the health and safety tip is the most important. And be safe with your new miter saws, guys, and best of luck and enjoy making. Now, I'm gonna get out of here. It's definitely time for a cold beer. I have one chilling in the fridge as we speak. So if you'll see in the next one, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed that one. Give it a thumbs up if you, if you have. Comments and questions below. And as always, massive thanks to everybody over on Patreon who continue to support the channel. It's very much appreciated, guys. I shall see you in the next one. Take it easy.